This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on the current format Performer Pals Zoo deck that I've been messing around with. I made a deck profile with a beta version of a June 12th format list that I put up on my channel quite a few days ago, about a week at this point maybe. Not really too sure on the date there, I'm really bad with telling time. But I had on that video, I said that I had a current format list that I'd been working with and playing with, and if you guys had any events that you were going to and you wanted to see the list, then I would definitely show it to you because it's relevant for the next two-ish weeks for anyone who wants to play a really fun deck at like their locals or whatever if they're still playing under current format all that sort of stuff but the deck can easily be adapted over to the June 12th format once we get those changes but basically just showing you guys this formatted list because you guys said you wanted to see it or at least some of you did but anyway the list is as follows it is a 42 card deck uh, I could not slim it down to 40 uh, for the life of me, and the, I have no idea how I'm going to even like maintain it at 42 <laughs> with the things I want to play in it when uh, when uh, the uh, format rolls over in terms of all the cards I really, really want to play after testing. But anyway, three Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer, the bread and butter of your combos with Pendulum Rising and your Zoo stuff and all that nonsense. Uh, best card, best Pendulum card like in the game, arguably. Uh, one Perform Pal Skulker Bat Joker, because it's not at three yet under this format list. Uh, but honestly, one is just fine because of the fact that your Pendulum Rising play does what it does in terms of the reach that it allows you to get. It allows you to basically summon this before your Pendulum Summon and then search this and normal summon it. So, I mean, there's that, which is really cool. Uh, one Perform Pal Dag Dagger Man, because he's, he's pretty necessary for a few of the combos, and he's a good little bit of recursion. He allows you to overlay with your things like Pendulum Sorcerer and your Skulker Bat Joker, get them back to your hand, so... It's, it generates bricks in, in like in its nature because it's not a level 4, uh, but it is a low scale, which is something that this deck has not too many of, although it does have quite a few more than it did previously. Um, it's just it's one of those weird instances. I mean, you can get some niche draws with it <laughs> off its field effect if you wanted to summon it um, and do the rotate at the form pal out for a draw, but honestly, it's really just here to be a card to extend your reach in the normal summon rat combos which I showed previously on my channel. But anyway, whoop, that was interesting. Uh, one copy of Form How Get Turtle, and then two copies of Lizard Draw to do those combos to get, you know, your draw twos. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of drawing with this deck using these cards, um, and alongside cards like Digesto Emerald, specifically because Digesto Emerald is going to be generating you draws, resetting your zoo engine, and then these are going to be cards that you get to use um, to get you extra draws as well. So you're really digging into this deck's combo potential and defensive line. So there's things like that. And then for the current format, I'm still playing the Sky Iris package, uh, a very small one at that, uh, but I am still playing Light Phoenix and Odd Eyes Unicorn because these cards are scales and they are cards that you can search off of Sky Iris, which helps alleviate some potential brickiness and bad hands. Like if you're not drawing Duelist Alliance, you want to be drawing Sky Iris uh, just for the potential of it being able to like load up your extra deck pretty efficiently while you're also doing zoo things to search scales and whatnot. But anyway. Uh, one copy of Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. This card's not really that great in terms of what it does for your scale things. Like, it's not really that important, although it is really cool when you do get its scale effect off. Um, it's more in here as a high scale that's searchable off Duelist Alliance um, because of the fact that it allow like, Duelist Alliance allows you to search Luster Pendulum and Pendulum Sorcerer specifically if you're just doing a straight-up search. Uh, and the fact that this can be summoned out of your deck off Vignister uh, is actually pretty important as well because a lot of times you end up with like board presence situations where you don't want to be popping your scales to spin with Ignister and summoning Luster from deck is just great for that. Um, like there might even be merit towards like adding a Master Pendulum into the deck because of the ability to summon it out of deck off Ignister um, is, is something that's very possible. But one copy of Dragoons of Draconia, a low scale to search during your zoo shenanigans because any zoo play involving like normal summoning rap here can search two scales by itself without doing Duelist Alliance. Uh, it can search a high scale and a low scale in the form of this being the low scale and the high scale being making King of the Fair Limps and searching for Lizard Draw. Uh, so we don't really need to play the King Bear. Uh, it's a Performer Pal name, so I mean that's kind of cool, but it's really just a bricky card. And in terms of playing King Bear or Dag Dagger Man as my high, as like my high level brick pendulum card, I'd rather play Dag Dagger Man. 
Especially since, like I said, you can search high scales in different ways through the uh, through the rat combo by itself anyway. So there's things like that. So this deck actually has quite a few like accessible low scales in it, even though in terms of what you're leaving in your scale, usually is high scales because of the fact that it's usually leaving your turtle in your scale and stuff like that. But uh, I digress. We have a mini magician engine to like just support getting good economical pendulum summons, and that's in the form of two Wisdom Eye Magician and two Dragon Pulse Magician. This is literally all that's in here as far as magician cards. Uh, the Wisdom Eye just being a nice quick plus one that's you know accessible off your pendulum rising into the like Skullcrabat Joker play uh, is something that's really important, and being able to get a low scale out of your deck is pretty important as well. Again, this could be a, like something like a Dragon Pit Magician, so you can have one high and one low scale, but Wisdom Eye is almost always being paired with a turtle in your scale which is then used uh, to go into a low scale into the form of the dragon pulse magician because so like the dragon pit almost never actually came up in testing so I'm not playing it in this version now next format we have three skull crab joker it's gonna be more likely for us to resolve double wisdom eye uh, so things like that uh, like dragon pit and maybe even oaf dragon or even like viable options for the next formatted list uh, going forward it just it really is like determines on what testing uh, says basically but anyway playing quite a like big zoo monster package because the most reliable way to out masterpiece um, and like Dryden's and things like that and like mirror matches or against like Draco variants were zoo cards like zoo cards are just always just really good for like just being a good supplemental engine they allow you to do a lot of things before you have to dedicate to your pendulum summon which then lets you do more all that sort of nonsense but the zoo engine that we're playing in terms of monsters is two copies of rap here uh, two copies of whip tail one copy of Thurblade, and one copy of ram ram so a fair bit of them in terms of what i've shown in previous pendulum variants um, of like zoo decks but usually it's just always just rap here maybe a like a random whip tail uh, but Ram Ram is pretty necessary. Thoroughblade just makes your barrages better. If you open, like, Barrage Tanky, um, then you're able to just rotate out Rat and do things like that. Uh, do things of that nature uh, and get extra draws. Uh, but the thing, the main thing is, is that Rat Pier plus Whiptail is a very easy out to Masterpiece, uh, depending on the grade of your opponent. Um, and, like, being able to make Dryden's huge and stuff like that with, uh, with Thoroughblades and Whiptails... Uh, is actually just pretty important. The Ram Ram is obviously important for the Shock of Nine and then popping it play. Uh, stuff like that. But a bigger Zoo lineup was just finding itself into this deck list uh, very, very quickly as, uh, as testing was done for the current format. And it might carry over to the next format as well. Because like I said, it's a very reliable engine for doing things. But uh, last random monster, I guess, if you're not counting hand traps, is Mass Chameleon. This card is searchable off your King of the Fairlimps if you already had Lizard Draw. It's another level 4 that you can just Pendulum Summon as a body, but it also allows you to have quick and easy pinpoint access into Ignister, which is one of the most important removal cards in the game in terms of uh, how good it is, especially since you'll be able to use this, Pendulum Summon it, make Ignister with this, and then summon Luster out of your deck. It just it gives the deck a good bit of reach in terms of its removal. Uh, but then the last actual monsters in the deck are uh, the 2 Ash Blossom and 1 copy of Maxi. I didn't want to play 3 Ash Blossom because I didn't want my hand to be bogged down uh, my hands to be bogged down with too many hard once per turn effects because I mean I've already got like play sets of spells that are hard once per turns and I didn't want a bunch of non combo cards in my hand to be not uh, like hard once per turns and stuff like that if that makes sense if that makes sense but anyway moving on to the spells we got two copies of sky iris there's no terraformings because we're not really trying to like reliably get into this we'd rather draw into the duelist alliances uh, or the pendulum rising uh, Duelist Alliance obviously is better. I don't want to play multiple Pendulum Rising um, yet. Uh, I might bump it up in testing, but so far I've just been liking it at one because you only ever want to resolve it at once, and you know you just draw Duelist Alliance plus Barrage or Rat, and that happens. Uh, Sky Iris is a thing where you don't really want to play multiples of this to brick on it as well with Magical Abductor not being in the list because Abductor got phased out by Duelist Alliance. Duelist Alliance is just a much better card because. It, it's just a one-for-one one straight activation, whereas Abductor requires itself and three other spells to be activated. Uh, so, like, it's just much less work. It's literally two cards, a Pendulum Scale and Alliance, versus three cards, or four cards, the Abductor and three spells. So, uh, it's just literally much, much easier work, as well as the fact that Pendulum Rising gets Pendulum Sorcerer, which basically means that Dual Alliance searches two scales. Uh, there's a lot of different things like that. So Sky, Sky Iris kind of picks, like, picks up the slack where these aren't there. Now you might be saying, well, instead of playing two Sky Iris, why aren't you just playing the other two Pendulum Risings that you could be playing? Because, again, we don't want a lot of that like hard once-per-turn nonsense. 
and not playing Sky Iris makes the Pendulum part of our deck a bit weaker, and it makes it to where the Zoo engine has to carry a bit more of the weight, and that's not really something that I wanted to do. I wanted to make the deck a little bit more well-rounded uh, in terms of what it can have access to. If you're not drawing Zoo pieces, uh, which is unlikely but still possible, the Pendulum Risings literally do nothing, but Sky Iris shines in those situations because it makes your Pendulum Summons better. It protects your scales from things like Dryden and Masterpiece, which is also relevant. Uh, there's, there's all these different little factors that go into it, but to support the Zoo cast, we've got three copies of Barrage and three copies of Tenki, so this is really why I'm playing such a bigger Zoo engine uh, in the form of the monsters. Um, like, I'm not playing Terra Top or Takatomborg simply because I didn't want to dedicate the extra deck room to Totem Bird or Invoker, as well as the fact that if I was going to be playing one of those cards, it was either going to be Instant Fusion or them because of the fact that, like, room in this deck is so tight with the bigger Zoo engine to make it more reliable against things like Masterpiece and Opposing Drydents and such, such and so forth. Uh, so basically, like we're just playing these cards to support the Zoo Engine as much as we can. Uh, Barrage is great because it can pop cards out of your scales to get wrap. Uh, the Tenki is good because there's it just gives you boosts, it gives you extra cards. Opening Barrage Tenki is still good in this sort of deck, uh, whereas that was something that previous versions of this build that I had on the channel were lacking, were in the fact that, like if you open Barrage Tenki, you only had like wrap here in deck. Uh, so like it was just a problem where like it'd be like you would like barrage out the rat. And then shuffle it back into your deck off like an Emerald play, and then Tinky for the rat for next turn is like, nah, why don't we just use Tinky to search for a scale? Or why don't we use Tinky to um, to like search Whip Tails to go with the Dryden? Like all these different things. Uh, the fact that Thurblades in the deck as well means the Barrage Tinky is a little bit interesting there as well. Uh, all these different things. All of these things coincide with each other. But those were the spells, and for the traps, there are only four there are three Strike and one Warning. Um, if I was going to change anything in this deck uh, for like including different pendulum cards, I mean, I guess you could include Ariadne since there is already the counter traps here. But Ariadne is kind of butt in terms of like, I'd rather just play the traps and just draw into them naturally off doing regular combos and not dilute my hands with things like Ariadne. Uh, because in testing, Ariadne was just really underwhelming, uh, like as a whole, in terms of you just you draw it going second and it's like, cool, I get to search this trap. But I'm not really doing anything to advance my game state. I'd just rather have been like another monster, like another copy of Whiptail or something like that. So there's that to uh, think about. But anyway, for the extra deck, like I said, that was a 42 card main deck. The extra deck, one copy of Ignister and one copy of Stardust Dragon. Uh, these are for the Mass Chameleon plays. Obviously, Ignister's just great removal. Stardust is actually pretty good turn one. Um, it's just constantly really good turn one because you can negate your opponent's Dragonic Diagrams, funnily enough. Um, if they're popping like cards on the field to use its effect, uh, you can pop barrage. You can negate barrages. You can negate opponents' dridents. Uh, you can't negate masterpiece, unfortunately, if it's unaffected by monster effects. But I mean, this card has a phenomenal amount of reach in it anyway, in terms of what it allows you to do. So it's a it's a pretty pretty solid turn one play if that's what you're going for. But uh, one copy of King of the Fairy Limps for a bunch of the combos. One copy of Tornado Dragon to be generic rank four removal alongside dridents to out other face up cards. Uh, three copies of Dagesto Emerald. I'm currently uh, missing a third one. I need to acquire a third one, but I am definitely playing three in every version of this deck that I've been playing online for playtesting. Because, Jesus Christ, uh, I made a combo video, and you make, like, I almost always make two Emeralds on the board turn one uh, to draw four cards. And so I'd rather, I'd like to have one in the extra deck uh, for the uh, for the capability of the two on the board dying and then needing a backup plan in the form of the third. But So, if you're constantly looping emeralds and you're constantly keeping one in your extra deck, then you're never going to run out of resources. Like, it's it's the safest feeling in the world having three Digesto Emerald in your extra deck because they will never go away. Uh, but one copy of Abyss Dweller, uh, just for good applicable matchups where it is important. And then we're playing a lot of Zoo cards in terms of they're just really good and we've got the monsters in the main deck to support them. So two copies of Dryden's. Dryden is Dryden the only uh, two card uh, the only one that we're playing two of. The rest are just one of, of uh, Broad Bull, Shaka 9, Tiger Mortar, Hammer Kong, and uh, Borbo. Uh, the reason we're playing two Dryden is because being able to stick two Dryden is pretty cool, pretty important as the game goes on. Uh, as well as being able to just throw out, throw out emeralds a lot, uh, you're able to overlay. If you have a Dryden from the previous turn, you're able to just throw any random one over top of it, detach it. Uh, and make another Dryden on top of it and attach the first Dryden and then shuffle it back with Emerald, making your Dryden sequencing pretty near infinite as well. But there's just not enough room for the rest of like other ones. Because I'd really like to play like two maybe maybe two Chaka 9 or something like that. 
Uh, but Hammer Kong is really important. Like these are just all important for random names. Uh, Broad Bull is obviously important. Like every single one of these is really important. Like if you wanted to make a card room in the extra deck, I guess you could cut one of the Drydents, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but the thing is, like, it's kind of okay playing one of each of these because of the fact that there is legitimately three Digusto Emerald in this extra deck. So if you're always able to summon Digusto Emerald, then you're always going to be putting these back eventually, uh, and you can get to those. But like I said, the Drydent being a two of is pretty important for the uh, for the stacking order of, like I said, you, you have Drydent on the field from the previous turn. It may have no materials under it. You put just a random name on top of it, and then you put the second Drydent on top of that. Detach the first Dryden to the graveyard to pop a card, and then you can emerald this Dryden back to the extra deck. Uh, it makes it pretty easy and pretty efficient. You can also do that with other means by like putting Broad Bull on top and detaching the Dryden. Stuff like that. But anyway, that has been this deck list essentially. Uh, it's an interesting deck. Uh, if you want to play it for the next two weeks that it is legal, go for it. This deck doesn't play Norton in it, so it's actually a pretty easy adjustment from this deck over to the new format. Uh, there's just cards in the main deck that have to be changed around ratio-wise because of the fact that Skull Crobat Joker goes to three, Wisdom Eye goes to three, uh, stuff like that. So the deck gets like bolstered in its performance, uh, and because of that, certain card ratios and certain card choices change. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on this deck in the comments down below. If you want to see some combos on how to perform first turn combos with like Rat Pier Duelist Alliance or Barrage Duelist Alliance, then go check out some other videos on my channel that I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. I've got a couple combo videos out there for you to look at if you are interested and want to learn a bit more about what this deck does in its first turn combo sequencing, which is one of the things that I think makes it really good. Its first turn combo sequencing is really good with what it can do with the uh, with the Zoo Engine, even without Norden, uh, without Teratops and all that sort of stuff. So definitely go check that out if you're interested. But other than that, as I've already said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly and maybe get some rewards as far as getting personal access into my private Discord server where I, me and many others chat on a 24-7 basis whenever I have access to a computer or a phone, then definitely go check that out. But if you want to support the channel, support something that you like, and help some future projects come into fruition faster than they would be normally, then definitely go check that out. Even something as little as a dollar is a fantastic way to show support for something that you like. But other than that, if you're new here, thanks for watching. Maybe consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know that you're liking the things that I'm doing for the channel. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Again, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and take care. I will see you in the next video.